In about 6 billion years, the sun will reach the end of its life, and the story of the solar system will come to an end 10 billion years in the making. Mercury, Venus, and most likely Earth and the Moon will be destroyed, Mars will be reduced to a smoldering wasteland, and the outer worlds of the ice giants and Kuiper Belt will slowly drift away, as the weakened gravity of the dead sun will no longer be strong enough to hold them. The solar system will be dead, and nothing interesting will ever happen here again. Or will it? Is this really the fate of the solar system and all stars like it? I've already made a separate video about neutron stars and how even these exotic stellar remnants could have active, interesting planets around them. But what about white dwarfs? This will be the second episode of a new series I'm making about the systems of dead stars, with the first episode, Pulsar Planets, already on my channel. But first, I think these systems need a better name. Most people refer to these types of systems as dead, but they aren't. The worlds of white dwarfs and other stellar remnants can be as active as interesting as regular star systems. So, I'll be making up a new name. I've already done this before in my video about Tartarian planets, so might as well do it again. So, from now on, I'll be referring to any system orbiting a white dwarf, neutron star, black hole, red giant, or any other form of star that's left the main sequence, a halcyonic system. The Greek word halcyon means to reminisce about a time in the past where things were ideal and happy, similar to how these systems used to be alive, but have since transitioned into a new, darker age. Similarly, I'll be calling any planet inside a halcyonic system a halcyonic planet. With that out of the way, this episode will be focusing on white dwarfs, the stellar remnant that the sun and all similar types of stars will eventually turn into. The sun will eventually become a white dwarf in about 6 billion years, so studying these objects is important to see what our solar system will eventually be like. It's assumed that the outer planets will survive the death of the sun, but without examples of this happening from other white dwarfs, we really don't know for sure. But so far, from hundreds of white dwarf systems that have been searched for planets, we've already found many. White dwarfs are better candidates for hosting planets than neutron stars for several reasons, the most important one being it doesn't take a supernova to form them. Supernovae, while not capable of destroying the outer planets of a system, will knock them out of orbit. But when a star like the sun sheds its outer layers and becomes a white dwarf, planets not already incinerated by the previous red giant will usually remain in orbit. In the case of our solar system, it's likely that everything from Mars to Sedna will remain in orbit of the white dwarf sun, at least for a while. This means that most white dwarfs will likely have remnants of their previous planetary systems around them, and there are a few examples of this. These are the white dwarfs WD1202-232, WD2105-82, and WD0806-661, the last of which is officially named Maru. The first two are recently discovered to potentially have planets around them by the James Webb Space Telescope. While these planets aren't confirmed yet, there's a high chance that they do exist. Both of these systems are unique because their planets, WD1202-232b and WD2105-82b, both have similar orbital distances to Saturn and Neptune in our solar system, though they're both multiple times the mass of Jupiter. This is the first time we've detected any systems around white dwarfs remotely similar to our own. These two systems confirm what we've thought, that the outer systems of stars can survive their star turning into a white dwarf. Not much else is known about these worlds, but they're prime targets for study from James Webb. These worlds are probably incredibly cold and dark, but there's another white dwarf that is a far more extreme planet. Maru is a young white dwarf about 64 light years away from Earth that was found to host a giant planet named Ara. I've already talked about Ara in my video about Tartarian planets, but it's far different than anything we have in the solar system, being almost 9 times the mass of Jupiter and orbiting at 2,500 astronomical units away from its star, at about the same distance the inner Oort cloud is from the Sun. It's unknown how Ara got this far out, but it either formed there as a companion to Maru that didn't gain enough mass to become a star, or got blasted out when Maru became a white dwarf. Either way, it's pretty clear that the outer systems of white dwarfs can remain long after their star dies. Ara is interesting because of its temperature. Despite being so far away from its star, which would make its temperature barely above absolute zero, Ara's average temperature has been measured to be between 125 and 170 degrees Fahrenheit. This is because Ara is massive enough to generate its own internal heat, raising temperatures in the planet's atmosphere. Not all white dwarf planets have to be dark and cold, and Ara is a great example of this. But what about new planets? Like pulsars, when a white dwarf forms, it captures a lot of debris around it. But unlike pulsars, white dwarfs are stable for long enough to allow this debris to reform into planets. And in fact, we might have already seen exactly that. This is WD1145 plus 017, a white dwarf with a large amount of debris around it. Instead of being blasted away from the star by radiation, the inner debris disk is actually falling toward the white dwarf, causing it to be polluted with rocky material. 
Large fragments of debris have also been observed in this inner disk, including one of the smallest objects ever found outside the solar system, WD1145 plus 017b. This object orbits within the White Dwarf's inner debris disk, and is the first exodwarf planet ever suggested to exist. If confirmed to exist, its mass will be smaller than Pluto, and about the size of the dwarf planet Haumea. It takes about two hours to complete a full orbit of its star, and has a temperature of over 6,000 degrees Fahrenheit, which is hot enough to cause material to evaporate off its surface and into space. This is just the largest of many fragments observed around this white dwarf, and there's also evidence for a similar colder disk farther away from the star. Even after the death of the star itself, planets can still form or be destroyed by white dwarfs. These places can sometimes be as active as the protoplanetary disk where planets form around young stars. So, planets can not only remain after the death of their stars, but new ones can form out of the ashes that came from the previous system. With all this in mind, what does a future solar system long after the sun has turned into a white dwarf look like? Well, it's likely that the outer gas and ice giants will remain, as well as the Kuiper Belt, though on significantly larger orbits as they move farther away from the smaller sun, which has lost over half of its mass. Mercury, Venus, Earth, and the Moon are likely gone, with Mars heavily scarred. With no planets except for Mars in the inner system left, and assuming we get lucky and the white dwarf sun gains an accretion disk from any debris that remains, it's not impossible for new planets to form. But the Halcyonic solar system will be far darker and colder than what it is today, with Mars receiving less light than the full moon gives Earth today and everything past Jupiter in essentially total darkness. It's safe to say that the solar system as we know today has come to an end. But if new planets can form closer to the white dwarf sun, a new era of the solar system could begin. White dwarfs are not the end state for stars like the sun. They're new beginnings for whole new types of systems, and for new planets to form and exist around a dying light of a fading star for trillions of years to come. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, check out my other videos about space.